M. Dumas & Sons, the 104 family-owned men's clothing store in downtown Charleston, continues with its legacy, style, and customer service to the low country. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with Gary Flint, the president and CEO of M. Dumas & Sons, for this edition of Quentin's Pulse Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Pulse Ups on Facebook. Gary Flynn, welcome back to the award-winning Quentin's Pulse Ups. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Very glad to be back. Oh, I appreciate it greatly. You are the president and CEO of M. Dumason, a, uh, I believe, a 103-year-old uh, family-owned men's, clo men's clothing store, that is, on iconic King Street right behind me. What's new? What's now at Dumas? Well, a lot, actually. Um, we've uh, just gone through, obviously, a very interesting last uh, 12 months or 10 months. And now we're hoping to, to kind of turn that calendar over to 2021. Um, we are starting to plan events and deliver new spring product and, um, you know, getting ready for hopefully a slightly better environment this spring than we had for last spring, last summer, last fall. And hopefully we'll start seeing some things moving in the right direction there. And we're ready for it. So. You Yes, indeed. That's so exciting. And I know that I want to take it back, obviously, to 2016 to the post Courier article, which they interviewed you. And you said, quote, our business is to create amazing, amazing lifelong relationships with our customers and provide them with terrific customer service that brings them back to M. Dumas and Sons for any and all their needs. What are those needs right now? Yeah, that's a good question, because they, they have altered since the last time you and I, <laughs> I spoke. Um, and it really depends on the customer. So we're trying to take it one customer at a time, one relationship at a time. Um, you know, some customers feel pretty comfortable coming right on in and doing things as normal um, with a mask on. Um, right. uh, but otherwise, they feel pretty good about getting about. And the other extreme is somebody who's really in lockdown and but still wants to stay connected to us. Um, so we're either doing phone call or we're delivering or and you know leaving it at the door or we're doing curbside pickup we're doing online business i mean we've really we're, we're throwing everything we can at the, at the wall right now to try to take care of everybody's needs and therefore you know try to keep our business moving forward and what exactly is that current relationship with your customers well, I'd, I'd say it's good. Um, you know, we have a pretty wide range of customers in our store. Um, we've got a bunch of people who just, you know, happen to walk down King Street and stumble upon us. And so that's a new relationship that we're building. Um, and then there's people who've been shopping here for decades. And, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges that we face is trying to keep that customer who's been with us for a long time engaged and making sure that they still feel connected to us and that yeah uh, that they're evolving with us as we move forward um you know they're if you're not evolving you're either dying or you're moving backwards and in this business we can't do that so we keep moving forward and moving forward and trying new things but that runs the risk of possibly you know disenfranchising somebody um, along the way and maybe they're not on board with where we're going but we're trying to make sure we stay connected to them and continue to provide them what they're used to from us while we're building this new clientele and uh, evolving into this kind of new business model. What is that new clientele right now? Um, so it's, it's a, a, again, a bit of a mixed bag there. Um, for example, this last weekend would have been Seawee in yeah. Charleston, right? Well, after Seawee canceled a couple months ago, uh, we reached out to the CVB, asked them to do some you know, sleuthing around and asked the uh, hotels, like, did you take a bunch of, of cancellations or not? And they had heard that not a lot of people canceled. So we decided that we were going to pretend like seaweed was going on and really throw the kitchen sink at this weekend. And so we had puppies in the window and we had, you know, custom Sartorio and Keton going on on the other side. We had duckhead pants and we had barber and we just did, we threw everything that we could think of at it. And the response was amazing. Um, and we were busy. Yes. Um, we had lots of traffic in the store. Um, and but it, again, that traffic was a mix. It was a yes. bunch of new people, a bunch of seaweed people that come back every year. And then a bunch of our core people who came back for some of these truck shows that are they find relevant for them. Um, so it's a, it, you know, we're, we're blessed because we have such a big, you know, kind of a big store and a lot of different product categories that that allows us to have a lot of different customers. So as things 
tend to shift a little bit more dressy. Mm. We go in that direction as tend, things tend to dress a little bit more casual, a little bit more soft, a little bit more loungy. We can go right. in that direction. And so we've, we've been able to pivot pretty, pretty quickly. I remember running past store on, on Saturday on my run. It was raining, but a lot of people were out there, so that was exciting to see. Yes, sir. Yeah. And since you're reopening last year, obviously because of COVID, how many people have come to the doors of M. Dumas and Sons? Oh, boy, I don't have a, a traffic counter. Uh, I wish I did. Um, but, you know, we definitely struggled through the months of uh, April, uh, like everybody else in May. Uh, we had a nice little, you know, traffic picked up a little bit in June. Uh, for Father's Day, we had a little bit of a bump there, thankfully. Um, and then, you know, July, August, September, October, November, we're all kind of about the same. You know, uh, we were roughly down about 30% uh, in traffic and therefore in sales during that time frame. So it's been a pretty big hit. Um, you know, I know some others have been hit harder and worse. You know, mm. Unfortunately, those in the restaurant and hotel and other service communities uh, that we uh, we travel in, that we're in, right. uh, have were harder hit than we are. So, you know, I'm trying to remain um, you know, positive and up that, you know, we're, we're doing as well as we are. And yet, you know, realistically knowing that, you know, it's been such a challenge. I mean, I've never been pushed in so many directions as I have this year to try to think of new ways to do things and different ways to do things and scratch and claw and <laughs> beg yeah. and uh, anything we can do to try to keep things going and keep the doors open and keep my staff employed, right. you know, the whole bit. And you know, we were, we were able to go through the whole thing without really laying anybody off uh, oh, in either location, which I'm happy about as well. Thank God. And uh, you talk about obviously traffic being down, I believe 30%. What was that lost revenue? It was pretty much, 30% loss revenue as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the margins in a retail store are not massive. So, you know, when you talk about, you've got your people to pay for, right. and my team is pretty well compensated because they are on commission. And then, right. you know, we've got rent on King Street, which isn't cheap, and, yes. you know, and you have to pay for your product and all of that at the end of the day. You know, if you're making, uh, you know, 10% or 15% margins at the end of the day or profit at the end of the day, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, we didn't do that well last year, unfortunately. Wow. Um, what were those supply chain constraints in the beginning of COVID for you all? Yeah, right in the beginning, we didn't really. The, the biggest supply chain was issued that the you know that we had end to end was me saying, "Please stop." Um, you know, there's no traffic coming into the store, so therefore there's no product going out of the store, so therefore I don't need product coming in. So that was the first, you know interruption of the flow of, 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 of goods. Um, and then the vendor community, you know, they got a bunch backed up on them in the spring and summer of last year of product that had been booked that got canceled or got cut or got pushed or whatever. And so you know, there was an initially a really big backup. And then, um, uh, but then the vendors reacted as they should, right? And, and as the you know, the, the mills were closed that weave the yarns of the cotton and the, and the yarn all the way, or and the wool all the way into, you know, making a, a sweater or a shirt or whatever. Those factories were shut down and, you know, the shipping was shut down. Everything was shut down for a while, depending on what country things were in. And so we're seeing the result of that through fall and spring where our deliveries were definitely delayed or canceled on right out. So mm. in fall, I probably had 30 or 40% of the stuff that I had originally booked just mm. never show up, which in high, you know, in hindsight, that was actually a pretty good thing uh, okay. because I didn't need as much as I had originally booked either. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, some of the best things that you wanted didn't show up and some of the things you were not as excited about did, but you know, <laughs> that's how it works. It works. <laughs> and this might be another question too to ask, but I don't know if this might be a good question to ask, but what are those stole demand sh uh, shocks in your mind? Say it one more time. I'm sorry. Yeah. What are those stole demand shocks that you're still oh, shocks? Yes, okay. sir. Oh, uh, hmm, I guess I'm still not a hundred percent clear on the question, but the demand shocks that we have. Yes, sir. Uh, demand on my business or demand on. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges, honestly, is just keeping morale up. You know, they, they're, as I mentioned earlier, you know, my team is paid on commission. The salespeople yeah. are. And so the store is making less money, but they're making less money too. And yet, you know, and just the idea of coming to work every day, wearing a mask for 10 hours a day, being in front of the, uh, the uh, general population every day. It's 
you know, we're not first responders, but we are definitely on the front lines. And, you know, the, there's a wide variety of people walking through our door and some people are not so much with the mask and some people are very much so much with the mask. And so, you know, we've had to really have really tough conversations all year long with customers about, no, I'm sorry, if you wish to shop with Dumas today, you must wear a mask. And, you know, some people weren't okay with that. And, that's the last thing I want to do is have somebody ushered out the store when we need every dollar we can get our hands on, but I have to protect my, had to protect my team. So I'd say that's one of, the, one of the biggest challenges and demands on me right now is just keeping everybody motivated and up and then coming up with exciting and fun things to do in the store for our customers to make them, you know, want to get out of their house and come downtown. Yes, indeed. And how have you been able to deal with the decline in say com- customer confidence? Yeah, that's been a challenge um, because, you know, Charleston itself, downtown Charleston, took a hit in another way with some riots and some disturbances that had happened and some protests and whatnot. And unfortunately, the, uh, you know, the impact of that was, um, I think, a little bit more exploded through the media than the reality of the situation. And so a lot of our long-term customers were very scared to come downtown right after all of that. And maybe to this day, they still feel like, "Mm, I don't know, downtown just doesn't feel safe right now. So that's been one massive challenge that we've had to face. And one of the things we've done there, um, we've connected about 12 of the stores in the, this area of King street and created what we call Mickey, which is middle King street. And it's not, it's like a group. It's like a coalition almost. It's a, it's like, Hey, we're better together than we are apart right now. So, you know, this is not about competition. This is not about me trying to get a dollar and you not getting that dollar. It's about us surviving and making sure that customers know it's safe and that it's amazing that we've got, uh, uh, you know, 12 of the best retailers in America, all within two blocks of each other, you know, come down. It's a great variety. It's still in a thriving, fun place to come to. And so just trying to keep that confidence and that, that message out there has been really important. And, you, you know, going back to 2016, you told the post Corey quote, we do this by being a better men's specialty store that specializes in high quality sportswear from updated brands such as Southern Tide, Bono Bowles, and Johnny O. Classic luxury brands such as Rob, Robert Talbot, uh, High Tilly, uh, Samuel Song, and obviously Hickory Freeman. Outdoor inspired brands like Barbara, Filson, and Wolvich to br- uh, premium demium brands such as AG Jeans, Citizens of Humanity, and of course, J Bram. Mm-hmm. What is that high quality sportswear that is on Duma's radar right now? Yeah, that's, uh, that's an interesting list because some of those people don't even exist in our store any longer. So it's. Um, you know, again, this is what happens in this business. You know, now that was almost five years ago now, and so things things evolve and change. And um, if that brand isn't moving forward and the results have not been great, then we unfortunately have to move forward too. Or in the case of uh, one or two of them, they actually had to shut their doors during all this uh, and are, have, have gone out of business. So, but what's driving things now? Uh, you know, Southern Tide continues to be my one of my most important brands, and. Uh, We did open a store with Southern Tide since the last time we spoke uh, over in Mount Pleasant in Town Center. So it's a Southern Tide by M. Dumas and Sons location, and we're really proud of that. Um, And then, you know, the newness piece in the sports world has really been this whole athleisure influenced stuff. You know, Lululemon paved the way here way before COVID ever came around. And, you know, our guy, we just couldn't get anything going in that direction. We tried a number of brands and just kind of, kind of just didn't do all that much with it as soon as all this hit that area exploded and so now like brands like viore and task and Faraday and other brands that speak to that soft comfortable stretch relaxed lifestyle is all the rage right now so i can't seem to get my enough of it in, in my store and let me ask you this because you said this too uh with so many shopping options available to consumers today in order to be heard to be relevant to be important you have to be able to let the customer shop the way that they want to shop so what shopping options is them looking at to implement yeah there's uh kind of goes back to the idea of we'll we'll shop we'll let you shop with us any way you want to shop with us um so you know we're doing things that we haven't done before part of the mickey deal is that we deliver 
you know, uh, into the greater Charleston area. So on Mondays, we're over in Mount Pleasant, and then Tuesdays, we're up in Daniel Island, and Wednesdays, we're over in Johns Island. So we're, we've got a kind of a, a delivery service in, in place now that we didn't have before. Mm-hmm. We're working on getting valet parking that we didn't have before. Um, we're doing curbside pickup, which we did before, but it wasn't a big deal before, and now mm-hmm. it turned into a big deal. So sure. Uh, we definitely put more emphasis on our assortment online and really pushed that um, more. And thank God that we did that. I mean, we, we plugged our, we, we upgraded our online um, platform and uh, and what it looked like and felt like in November before all this happened. So that was amazing timing on our part because it allowed us a few months to kind of work some kinks out. And then we were relied on it 100, almost 100% during those times. Uh, so that that was another way that you could shop with us. And then we've been like we've been doing appointments more. Um, some people have come in before store hours because they feel more comfortable with less people around. Um, we've gone to people's offices for that same exact reason, where they feel like they're in a secure place um, and they trust us to know that we're going to do the right thing by them. So um, yeah, as I tell my team, there's no bad idea right now. And we're willing to do anything that we need to do to work with, with customers in any way that makes them feel comfortable. And you said, quote, too, with more and more brands opening up their own retail stores, it's really forcing the specialty realtor to move faster and to have a unique point of view. What is that point of view right now, Gary? Yeah, you know, I think the, one of the things, the core values of Endumas and Sons has not changed over the course of time. And that is we're going to have exciting, vibrant brands in the store. We're going to buy them deeper than most people do. So you get better choices and more assortment in the store in those brands that you love. And we also want to make sure that you're coming in and discovering something new almost every time you come in where, oh, I've never heard of that brand or what is this all about? Or "Hmm, I've never seen anything like that. I'd never wear it, but tell me more about it. You know, just piquing that person's curiosity um, and I, that hasn't changed in 104 years that we've been open. So um, the uh, and the ability that I'll tell you right now, if we do this interview three years or four years from now, I'll have lots more things to tell you that we are we're doing now that we didn't do that. We're doing that, I mean, so what we're doing then that we're not doing now. So right. um, that's that's the nature of the beast, so to speak. And I feel like we've got our ear to the ground and are out and about. You know, this is a time when people aren't traveling a whole lot, but mm. for fall market, uh, which is, you know, was just, I just finished, right. I ended up traveling to five different cities to go find the best stuff in, in, in the world for our customers. Um, and, you know, it was, it was not necessarily easy, but it was definitely the right thing to do because I found amazing things for fall. I'm really, really excited. One of the best seasons I think I've ever seen. Wow. Well, what are all those brands that the customers are coming in looking for? Well, uh, so we have a few things uh, that, that are very well um, sought after. You know, we're, we're proud to have Barber as a big brand in our store. I've mentioned Southern Tide. Right. Um, and Filson is another one that's huge. You mentioned that earlier when we were talking about brands. Um, those are really hard to find brands that we have a lot of product in. So if you're a fan of Filson and you happen to be in Charleston, and you walk in our store or you Google and you see where, where you can buy Filson, you're kind of shocked to come in and see how much we have, or you're shocked to see how much Barber that we carry. We carry more Barber than any other men's specialty store in the Southeast. Um, we're the largest um, men's specialty store with Barber that they, they have on the East Coast. So um, it, it, things like that um, are really cool. So people come and search us out for those things. But then we're really getting to be known to show really beautiful, high quality, luxury Italian clothing, whether that be Keton and Sartorio sport coats, or that be a Levendi in a more casual way, or a Fideli in a beautiful knit and sweater way, or, you know, Eaton, which is an amazing shirt business, which kind of took the place of Robert Talbot that went out of business, which was one that was a massive business for us at one point, and they're completely gone now. Wow. So, um, yeah, those those marquee brands are kind of important, are very important for our business. And then, you know, like I said, the rest of it is about coming in and discovering new things. Um, well, one of the hottest brands that we have right now is, is uh, Faraday. Um, and uh, that's become uh, almost a shop in the store now. Uh, almost not necessarily as big as Southern Tide or Barber, but 
I wouldn't be surprised if it gets there one day. Oh, yes, it definitely will. And this might be a redundant question, Gary, but what stuff are you buying more of that is actually selling? Yeah, uh, soft, comfortable, stretch, you know, performance fabrics, uh, which I didn't necessarily hit on earlier, okay. is, are a big driver at every price point. Um, you know, stretchy pants and comfort. Uh, if you're sitting down a lot in your job now that maybe you weren't before and you're doing a lot of these kinds of conversations <laughs> or before you were doing in person, uh, you know, you want to be comfortable, but you know, you also want to be a bit put together. Right. And that kind of stuff is doing amazing. So from PT uh, uh, Torino Performance Pants at $395 that are over on the luxury side, all the way to a, uh, you know, a performance pant from uh, Southern Tide that might be $125. We, we have all of that. And then performance is showing up in shirts and it's in sweaters and it's, it's, it's kind of permeated into almost everything that we do now. Wow. And I may have to ask you a difficult question, but what do you listen to when, you, when it comes to your competition? I try to listen to everything, honestly. I, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, and I know it. Uh, but, you know, I pay attention, and I listen, and I, I try to watch. And if I see something that might be working well somewhere else, I try to go explore it and see if it would work for us. Um, you know, I want to make sure that I know where things are going. And you learn about that in a lot of ways. You know, you learn about it through research and just combing the Internet and seeing the buzz out there that way and socially and Instagram and all that. But then you also, you know, you talk to other store owners um, and maybe in other markets that you're friends with now and find out, you know, you kind of brainstorm with them what's working for you. Well, what's working for you? What did you find? Or what did you find? You know, and you find some things that way. Um, and then you go to some of these shows and you kind of walk up and down the aisles and see what's happening. So, you know, like I said before, King Street, we tried to make it less competitive and more about brotherhood and about coming together. But at the end of the day, if a hot new brand is coming out, uh, I want to be the first on the <laughs> on the street to have it if I can. Absolutely, and I know you want brotherhood and obviously, you know, con you know, togetherness when it comes to the, obviously the competition on on yep. King Street. But what are the levels of local competition? Well, I think King Street is vibrantly alive for c competition for menswear. From okay, within one mile. You have what I think is four really, really good men's specialty stores. Um, and most markets really only have like one. Um, and we have four within a mile. Um, so you've got Berlin's, which does a great job. And they're, they've been around longer than we have. And, uh, we love what they do. Uh, you got um, Grady Irvin, which is a couple of, you know, a block, half a block away from us up the street. And then you've got Jordan Lash, which is a little closer to us even. Um, we all kind of take a slightly different spin on it um but that's you know it's a pretty pretty competitive environment then you put the national retailers in there and uh you know things like uh vineyard vines and uh lucky brand and quicksilver and joseph banks and yes. brooks brothers and all of that's on king street so um you know if you're a guy shopping up down king street there's no shortage of places for you to spend your money and i, I view that all as competition like yeah, if if you were to come walking on King Street and you had $200 to spend, I want 201 of it in my store, you know, yes. <laughs> instead of you spreading it around if possible. Yes. So right. that's, that's, the, that's the idea. Idea. And you're speaking of ideas, let me talk to you about your team. What are those different strengths when it comes to your team? Yeah, I'm so proud of my team right now. Um, excuse me, but they've been through hell. And they've really done a great job of just soldiering through and they put themselves on the line for me and for my customer, our customer. And I couldn't, I couldn't ask for more. Um, so I'm super grateful, super proud of them. And, you know, I'm trying to make sure they feel that gratitude. Yes. Yes. And I know all of them. They're really great, great people. Uh, let, me, let me talk to you about obviously customers again, because you said this too, quote, it seems cliche to say, but the way customers are shopping and researching continues to evolve. Customers today have access to so much information and so many choices that makes, makes you have to think due to your decision, decisions differently. Being available to your customers for the way that they want to shop, when they want to shop, and how they want to shop has changed dramatically, and is still evolving today. You have to, you have, you have got to be what, what are the new ways to open and to order to serve your customers. So, uh, how are customers shopping and actually researching today? Yeah, I mean this this whole uh, world right here 
yeah. created more time for our customer to have on their hands. You know, if they were forced to stay home, it created a little bit more free time um, and it allows them to be more connected to what's happening out there. And even uh, it, it sped up their ability to learn and it sped up because they had the time to do it. Um, and so more of our customers know more about things now than they ever have, even since you and I talked before. So um, yeah, it, it um, yeah, some of the, and I didn't mention this before, but sometimes we learn about brands from a customer. You know, they say, Hey, have you ever heard of so-and-so? I'm like, no, tell me more about it. And why is that interesting to you? And yes. why, why, why do you think it would work here and all that? And, and then you go and research and you, you say, you know what, you're right. That would be great here. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, that, just leveraging um, that they, they've been, they are able to leverage um, way more now than they ever have been. And so you better be on your P's and Q's. You better know what you're doing um, and you better not uh, try to say something that's not necessarily true just to sell something. You know, we have to be very forthcoming and, and forward because sometimes a person coming in who's done some research may know more about what I'm trying to sell them than he, than I do. So right. Um, you know, you just, you, you try to combat it with humility and, and truthfulness. And yes. if, if you don't know the answer, you know, you don't, you say, gee, I don't know. Let me look into right. that for you or whatever. So and I think customers really appreciate that approach. And, yes. And, and we, we were learning as much from them as anybody else right now. Exactly right. And I, I know you have to run, but let me ask you about that new business model. What is your strategic plan that you and your team are developing for the next five, 10 years for M. Dumas and Sons? Uh, that's a good, another good question. Um, you know, the, the plan has a slightly adjusted based on this last year. Um, right now, uh, we're working on trying to shore the, shore the ship up a bit and make sure that, you know, there's no holes leaking out anywhere and really kind of, kind of get ourselves moving straight ahead again um, and strongly, which will probably take another year, maybe a year and a half to kind of come out the other side of all of this. Um, but we still have plans of expansion and we still have the plans of, you know, opening another and Dubas and Sun store somewhere in the right place. Uh, maybe another Southern Tide store somewhere in the right place, or maybe another brand that we do a partner store with that I don't even know about right now. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're having conversations about maybe opening a women's store by and Dumas and Sons on King street. I mean, nothing is off the table as far as ideas, because as hard as it is to, think about growing right now, this is the opportunity time to, to do such a thing because so many spots are available on King Street right now and the rents are starting to come down that if you can figure out how to how to expand now and get in kind of at the low, it'll it's, it's the time to expand, but it's really difficult to think about it right now when you're just trying to get through every month and every day right now. But that, the, those are still some of the bigger plans that we have. Gary Flynn, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quintus Close Ups. All right, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Anytime.